Hello, this is uh, Industrial Control Circuit Troubleshooting 2, 6th module. Now we are doing Genius Skill Test number 4. The work order that we received just now stated that the program 14 of the PLC logics diagram do not run properly. So what is the problem? Let's dive in. By visually checking on the external devices and the circuit, I noticed that there is no lighting on the control panel. So by checking the emergency stop, the EMO switch actually did not press previously. So maybe it's because of the fuse blows. So by looking at the circuit, we know that the control panel lighting is actually connected to the PLC output channel. Okay. It get the live current or the AC current from the transformer. The transformer, step down transformer provide the current via the fuse then to the PLC output channel, which is connected to the external output load, consists of this lighting, agitator, contactor coil, etc. So when this fuse is blown, there is no complete circuit for the current to, fit, to, to flow through the circuit to the PLC output channel circuit. So let's check the fuse first. Okay, the fuse blows. As we know, the fuse blows because there is a short circuit. Short circuit can be a fault or device having internally short circuit. Okay, no matter which fault it, it is, we need to check the resistance. But resistance cannot be measured live. Okay, so we have to cut off the main power supply. Okay, perform the lockout takeout and verify the lockout takeout is done properly. <clears throat> when we check the earth fault or device internally short circuit, we had to open both wire end. Okay. So for me, I prefer to open the end of the common neutral and the end of the common life. To we always check the earth fault first before we check the device internally short circuit. So to check the earth fault, always place the prep. The, sorry, the black probe at the ground point to check the ground fault or earth fault and the red probe at the other opening end. Okay, so under these circumstances, if we get the OL open circuit on the multimeter when measuring the resistance, it, it, it means either the circuit is good or having device internally short circuit. If we get resistance reading on the multimeter, be it small like lesser than 2 ohm or high, higher than 2 ohm, it means the circuit having a fault, such as in this case. Okay? So, by looking at the schematic control diagram, this is a schematic power diagram. Schematic control diagram, we know that this fuse, where the current will flow through the circuit via the fuse to the PLC output channel. Okay, this is related to the PLC output channel. So when we put the red probe of the multimeter or the red probe of the multimeter at this point, the current from the multimeter will flow through this point, then reach here and branch out to different path. This is the first path, second path, and third path to the PLC output circuit. Okay. So at first we understand that we always using divide and conquer strategy to divide the circuit into small separate separate parallel circuit and conquer it by checking the earth fault one by one okay we can we should always check the earth fault before the load at the load and after the load okay for me i prefer to check here first by pressing the emo switch button open if it gives the ol or open circuit register reading on the multimeter it means the circuit before this EMO switch is okay. If there is a resistance, be it small or big, it means there is a fault before the switch. 
right let's say this this line having a fault or short circuit to earth so the current from multimeter will straight away short circuit to earth hence will give you the resistance reading why because the current from multimeter flow to here to here if there's an earth fault it will go to the earth then this earth actually connected to this earth where the black probe of the multimeter is pointing at then it will flow to the multimeter and then back to this point this will complete a complete loop circuit loop okay so now we press the button of the EMO switch okay it gives you OL OL mean open circuit okay what does it mean OL open circuit okay so it means when this EMO switch is pressed is open so the current flow through here it gives you the open circuit reading it means the circuit before the stop button is okay so the fault is actually can be at the switch or after the switch so now we measure at point 3 okay now it gives you okay this is the point 3 sorry okay now we release that means there is a short circuit here and we can understand from here okay so now what we do is we know that this circuit before the switch is okay so the fault must be from the point 3 of the stop button straight away to here okay now we can view from the wiring diagram we know that this is a stop push button okay where the the power supply life to 4 to point 4 then then to point 3 on the stop push button this point 3 actually connected to the output of the plc output channel com1 here then you see here from the stop button stop push button number three here stop push button number three so we just disconnect the wiring here and see whether there is any open circuit the open circuit means the circuit before the this point is okay if there's a reading resistance reading be small big that means there's a effort in this wire from this point to this point okay so now we do this one you still have a resistance reading that means there is an output from here to there okay okay to double confirm we can actually okay stop push button number three see yes there is an output in this wire from here all the way to here so we just need to change okay then after that remove the lockout takeout Oh, sorry, I forget to put the fuse. So, normalize the circuit and then replace the fuse. Okay, by common sense, the PLC output channel 1 and 2 LED should turn on. Okay. This uh, PLC output channel 1 and 2 LED should turn on because the power lighting and ready lighting should turn on under either condition. If we don't turn on, that means the PLC output channel most likely is faulty. Okay, so we can just change the PLC output channel. Yes, there's a reading here. And as we know, the work order stated there, the program 14 
did not run properly. So we had to download the PLC program. So we go to laptop, PLC, go online. So we had to open the PLC program 14, download again. It's a PLC program 14 and start running, see whether got any issue or not. It was unable to download, maybe there's a water inside the tank, so we had to drain the water. So what is the problem here? Ah, see, 14 did not turn on. When put to remote, 14 should turn on. So there's something wrong with the 14. So how do we check this? There's 14 actually connect to remote. If it did not turn on, most likely the remote switch is having internally open or any wire or even the PLC input channel is open or there is a loose termination. So we can measure the voltage here. This voltage is a DC voltage, okay, from power supply. Okay, we measure the voltage here. The common is a minus voltage from the power supply. So set to DC voltage then here to here there is no voltage here and we know this PLC input channel 14 PLC input channel 14 from TB2 15 TB2 15 here it's actually from local remote 3 local remote 3 here okay here local remote 3 here Okay, here did not open. Sorry, it's my fault. So I need to cut off the power supply, perform the lockout takeout, and then okay, connect back the wiring. It's my fault. Okay, just remove the lockout takeout and turn on the power supply and start to run the process. Now 14 is turned on. Okay. Here stated that for program 14, okay, when in remote mode, this process continues until the switch is set to locker mode. So we have to set to locker mode before it ends. And here telling us that upon starting, the tank receives both liquids until 40% full. So that means both S1, S2 solenoid valve will open for the liquid to go inside and will stop filling when it reaches 40%. That means intake 1 should be 20%, intake 2 should be 20%, both make up to 40%. Now it show 25% and 25%, that means something is wrong. So the level is not correct. Most likely it's because of the level switch issue. So we need to check the level switch. Before that, you need to cut off the power supply, perform the lockout takeout. Okay, then we have to check the level switch. Maybe something wrong with the level switch. It said that one of the float switches has become detached and is at the wrong level. That's why it cannot measure correctly. The level is supposed to be 40% but it measures about 50%. So we need to replace, remove the lockout takeout, then we run the process again. We put to re remove and run the process. Then we set back to locker so that we can stop the process. Okay. Intake 1 20%, intake 2 20%, both make up to 40% as expected. 